This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Three peace activists, one an 85-year-old nun who infiltrated a nuclear weapons site, have been freed from prison after their convictions were overturned, after two years in prison. In the early morning of July 28, 2012, Sister Megan Rice, Vietnam War veteran Mike Wally, and Carpenter Greg Borgia Obed broke into the Y-12 nuclear facility in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, known as the Fort Knox of uranium. The complex holds enough uranium to make 10,000 nuclear bombs. Armed with the Bible, flowers, bread, flashlights, binoculars, bolt cutters, and several hammers, the activists managed to enter deep inside the facility, cutting through four security fences. It took guards an hour to realize security had been breached. By then, the activists had splashed human blood on the walls of the nuclear facility and spray-painted messages reading, Woe to an empire of blood. Disarm, transform. The fruit of justice is peace, and plowshares please Isaiah. The New York Times described the action as the, quote, biggest security breach in the history of the nation's atomic complex. The break-in sparked a series of congressional hearings. This is Texas Republican Congressman Joe Barton at one hearing in September of 2012. When an 82-year-old pacifist nun gets to the inner sanctum of our weapons complex, you cannot say, job well done. She's in the audience. Would you please stand up, ma'am? We want to thank you for pointing out some of the um, problems in our security. Uh, while I don't totally disagree, don't totally agree with your platform that you were espousing, uh, I do thank you for bringing out the uh, inadequacies, inadequacies of our security system, and thank you for being here today. Mr. Chairman, that young lady there brought a holy Bible. If she had been a terrorist, the Lord only knows what could have happened. Later in that hearing, Congressman, now Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts, also spoke. Thank you, uh, Sister um, uh, Megan Rice, for being here. Thank you for your actions. Thank you for your willingness to focus attention on this nuclear weapons buildup that still exists um, in our world and uh, how much we need to do something to reduce it. We don't need more nuclear weapons. We need fewer nuclear weapons. We don't need more hostility with Russia. We need less hostility with Russia. Um, we thank you. We thank you for your courage. You should be praised because that's ultimately what the Sermon on the Mount is all about. In May 2013, the anti-nuclear activists, who called themselves the Transform Plowshares Now, were convicted of willfully damaging federal property and sabotaging national defense material. Mike Wally and Greg Borgia Obed received a five-year sentence each, while 84-year-old nun Megan Rice received nearly three years. Well. This month, after two years behind bars, a federal appeals court vacated their conviction, saying the prosecution failed to prove the three intended to injure the national defense. The court ruling read in part, quote, vague platitudes about a facility's crucial role in the national defense are not enough to convict a defendant of sabotage. All three activists were released this weekend until their resentencing on a remaining charge of damaging government property. Defense lawyers say they've likely already served more time than they're set to receive. Well, Sister Megan Rice, just out of jail after two years, and um, as well, uh, we thank you so much for being with us. Um, we were hoping to have Michael Wally on with us, but he's on a flight heading home right now. But we are joined uh, by Mike Borgia um, Obed. Thank you, Wally. Uh, Michael Wally. Mike, Mike Wally and Greg Obed, right. Um, we uh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, talk about what it means to be free right now. Um. <clears throat> I really wouldn't say we feel free, Amy, because as long as there's one nuclear weapon existing, nobody's free. Why is this so important to you? That's why it's so important. The world is at risk every moment, as long as there's one. And we have more, probably more than 10,000 in this country alone. 
10,000 nuclear weapons. Thermonuclear, yeah. I wanted to turn for a moment um, um, to our guest in New Orleans, to Bill Quigley, um, who represented uh, the Trans for Now player shares activists, uh, Mike, Megan Rice and Mike Wally and Greg Borgia Obed. Uh, he's a professor and director of the Stuart H. Smith Law Clinic and Center for Social Justice and the Gillis Long Poverty Law Center at Loyola University, former legal director for Center for Constitutional Rights. Bill Quigley, the significance of the judges releasing these three activists, one a Reagan appointee, one a Bush appointee. Talk about what they said. Well, they uh, said that these folks were not a danger to society. Uh, they said that they have likely served more than enough of their sentence for the convictions that still remain for damage to government property. Uh, and they, uh, late Friday, uh, ordered their immediate release on their own recognizance uh, from federal prison, which is unprecedented not just in protest cases, but in uh, almost all criminal cases. And I think is a, is a great tribute to the peacefulness, uh, the, uh, the, the way that these three individuals have conducted themselves. They've always been respectful. They've always been open. They've always explained exactly what they do and why and what spirit they've done it. So it's a, it's a really big action by the federal government. It's also important to point out that the Department of Justice essentially uh, said, yes, these folks are not a danger to society. And yes, if the sabotage charge uh, remains out of their case, then they should be free. So it was a, a great action by the government. The, uh, the, the Court of Appeals essentially said this is a protest. These folks are engaged in peaceful protest and that they were prayerful and that the, gov the, the security of the United States was never at risk from this and that uh, while damage to property might be appropriate, the idea that peaceful protesters uh, are uh, in danger of the security of the United States was uh, really a step too far. I said that um, Greg Borgia Obit was with us, but it's uh, he who is on a plane and isn't able to see us now, headed to see his wife. But we are joined by Michael Wally. Michael Wally, your response to being set free after two years um, serving a five year sentence? Well, I'm, uh, I'm glad to have my freedom. Uh, uh, something like 2.3 uh, or 4 million other uh, people are still in the penal system. I, I continue, uh, now that I am on this side of the prison walls, to oppose the ongoing, continuing uh, offenses of the United States government to the rule of international law, the, uh, the uh, terrorist site that they are operating at Oak Ridge Y-12, continues the ill legal activities of proliferating uh, nuclear weapons of mass destruction, which were condemned by Dr. Martin Luther King, who died in the same state. He died in Tennessee in uh, 1968. He condemned nuclear weapons. The uh, weapons uh, activity continues, and uh, I, as a, a Christian, oppose it, and uh, I uh, oppose the uh, 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 refusal of the U.S. government to act in compliance with its legal obligations. Megan Wright, could you talk about what you did, uh, Sister Megan, in 2012? Tell us the day and how the two of you, Mike and uh, Greg and you, uh, came together and targeted the Y-12 facility in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Thank you very much, Amy, for giving us this time. <clears throat> uh, we spent much of our lives thinking about this, uh, uh, you know, what can we do? We are all equally responsible. And so we decided that, you know, this is the time we could uh, say something again that has been said over and over. And we met uh, and began a, a, a really uh, almost a year of focused discernment, uh, um, asking the spirit to inspire us. Uh, with what could be considered um, a priority place that has not been talked about in the recent times. And we ended up, you know, knowing that it would be Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Why uh, Oak Ridge? Uh, Y-12, yeah. Why Oak Ridge? 
Well, it's just that everybody can't be at this full time, and it, it hadn't been, you know, they take turns in different places. You know, we're all, uh, there's just not enough time to do this monstrous, um, uh, to reveal, there's so much be, to be revealed. You know, it's been a secret for 70 years from the beginning and um, what they were doing. And nobody, workers are not able to tell co-workers what they're doing, so. Well, talk about its role in World War II and the making of the atomic bombs that were dropped on yeah, Japan. Uh, to be very brief, that uh, the whole city of Oak Ridge had to be constructed. It was just a spot arbitrarily chosen because it was sort of near the TVA and all that, good energy source. And, and um, they just, launched ahead with very little um, planning and constructed the city at the same time that the scientists were developing the bomb and um, in different places giving uh, and so the major portion of the construction was completed at Oak Ridge other places um, completed other parts and they were ready to test the first bomb on the 16th of July 1945 and that was in uh, Alamogordo, New Mexico, near Los Alamos. I mean, not near, but uh, anyway, there. And everybody saw that it worked. So they knew it would work. I mean, they didn't really know it would work, but it worked. And uh, so they went ahead and, and with their plans, not communicating with each other. The scientists were not told what they were going to do, and the scientists all objected that it would ever be used again, literally. Not all, but J. Robert Oppenheimer first. Anyway, uh, it, as we all know, it was used, and um, they were told that it would be dropped over the Pacific as a demonstration, you know, and, and they knew what they were going to do, so it was done. So again, we have secrecy and lies and the co United States population not consulted, so it was totally undemocratic. I want to play some audio from inside the courtroom during oral arguments during the appeal. This is Judge Raymond Kethledge questioning Assistant U.S. Attorney Jeff Theodore about the government's definition of national defense. The judge begins by asking how bread, banners, and blood could be seen as instruments to injure na 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 the natural defense. Listen very carefully. Isn't it fair to say that, that the instruments here, you know, hammers, bread, banners, spray paint, and blood, that's about it. The instruments here, those are instruments of injury and national defense. It certainly could be, Your Honor. Absolutely. Uh, the key well, is. It's, I'm not talking could be. These folks are in prison right now. So in this case, on this record, maybe we ought to step back from an interpretation of the national defense that is so eggshell that hanging banners and this sort of thing constitutes sabotage in this country. That was Judge Raymond Kethledge. He ended by saying, maybe we should step back from an interpretation of national defense that is so eggshelled that hanging banners and this sort of thing constitutes sabotage in this country. Sister Megan, your response? Uh, absolutely. There's no question about it. We were communicating with symbols because we knew we would not be there long. And we were not there even uh, as long as uh, Amy had to say. We were there a very short time, not more than 20 minutes. So we had to act Did quickly. you call them, as sometimes happens with Plowshares actions, or did they come to see you there? there uh, within seven minutes, they saw us there. It, didn't, it was not an hour. We, we, we entered at exactly quarter, we were inside at quarter to five, and we began doing our work, and the first uh, security officer drove slowly in at about 10 after five, and we had done everything. We had done everything we planned to do to communicate the truth that this is not a way to win a war. What was your response, Sister Megan, when uh, Congressman Barton congratulated you for helping uh, to leading to the hearings and helping them um, increase the national defense, yeah, increase nothing security? To do, or security was what they pointed out. Right. It, yeah, that it was a matter of, of revealing their lack of security. That was not our purpose at all. Our purpose was just to speak the truth about weapons of mass destruction that everybody knows that they're illegal, immoral. The Transform Now Plowshares, Michael Wally, how did you choose that name? 
Uh, actually, uh, Sister Megan Rice uh, is the one who uh, came up uh, with the name uh, when we were uh, preparing for months uh, for our action. Megan Rice. Yes. Now, transform Sister Megan. now is yes. the message. Yes. Why have we spent $10 trillion in 70 years when that could have been used to transform not just the United States, but the world? into life-enhancing alternatives. Instead, we make something that can never be used, should never be used, probably will never be used, unless we want to destroy the planet. This idea of plowshares, go back to 1980, when it's Father good. Dan and yeah. his brother Phil Berrigan right. yeah. led others yeah. in the General Electric mm -hmm. protest. And they were feeling exactly as we did. They knew these things were immoral and uh, beyond the beyond, and, and they knew they needed to be converted into that which is needed and useful. And so they began the deconstruction of that which was immoral and obscene. It was a deconstruction to reconstruct what we really need. They broke into the General Electric facility That's in right. um, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, the General Electric nuclear missile facility mm -hmm. there, um, hammered on the nose cones of nuclear missiles and poured blood onto the right. documents and the files. Right. They have the same thought. And, and Isaiah, way, way back, had said, let us tran you know, let us beat our swords into plowshares. This is uh, the wife of the late Philip Berrigan, um, Liz McAllister, speaking in 2010, a well-known peace activist who herself is engaged in these actions outside the Lockheed Martin offices in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, on the 30th anniversary of the Plowshares inaugural disarmament action. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks, Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, nor shall they study for war any more. Thou shalt not kill, became in that joined, in our understanding, to a way of interfering with the killing. Not just to say thou shalt not kill, but to literally take hammer to the weapons of death and destruction, which the eight did at the GE facility to stand in the way of the machinery of death. That's Liz McAllister, again, a uh, well-known peace activist, lives at Jonah House in Baltimore, wife of the late Philip Berrigan, who spoke outside the Lockheed Martin offices in King of Prussia, um, Pennsylvania, on the 30th anniversary of the Plowshares' inaugural disarmament action. We're going to come back to this discussion, and then remember Malcolm X, he would have been 90 today. Stay with us.